Hey everyone, Roger here, and guess what day of the week it is? It's hump day, it's Wednesday, and what does that mean? It is tour time with Boo. So we are here at the residences at Equality Park, and we are about to go in on seeing exactly what Robert Boo is doing. How hard is Robert Boo really working? Hi everyone! <laughs> we are busy, busy, busy working. I have just been doing whatever we're supposed to do with this. We are on the third floor and I'm just going to take this down a little bit so you can see. Careful of my uh, leg extensions there. Alright, I'll be back. Alright, see you all later. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Careful, this is an active construction site. Oh my God. So, everyone, we're on the third floor of the residences and uh, progress, as you can see, is going on. We just got off a break. I have been busy all morning, working, hammering, spackling. I'm gonna be uh, doing something with this uh, drywall. I don't know what, but I'll be doing something with it. So, we wanted to uh, continue our tours of the uh, the residences, but before we do, I have a couple of announcements I would like to share with you. First, if you remember last week, I announced the resiliency fund that our fund had started, and they were uh, fundraising for 150000 to match the $150,000 that they had. Well, as a result of that, the Pride Center has been awarded $20,000 from our fund, from the Resiliency Fund. So that is absolutely fabulous, especially at this time when our fundraising efforts have been um, hampered because of the pandemic. Our Rainbow 5K has been postponed, our Diversity Honors that was planned later this month at the Hard Rock Hotel, Guitar Hotel, um, has been postponed. So now it's really important for us to to look at uh, different ways of fundraising. And so with the Resiliency Fund, we're also able to apply that towards the AWOP matching. Uh, and so that 20,000 is actually gonna get us $40,000 for our uh, programs and services and keep going. I'll be with you in a second. Um, keep working, I'm on break. And um, so anyway, I do wanna thank the Our Fund and the community for helping to make that happen. So, tomorrow at 5 o'clock, we are going to be doing a Facebook Live in collaboration with um, Legal Aid, and they're going to have several experts on that panel. And um, it's a Facebook Live virtual clinic, and one is Know Your Rights About Housing. So, if you are worried about housing um, and your apartment or your mortgage, um, Legal Aid experts are going to be there to, to help you do that. So please join Christopher Fagenbush as he moderates that panel and the experts from Legal Aid. And then also I just want to um, remind everyone that Saturday is uh, National Transgender HIV Testing Day. And so along with uh, Ariana Center and Aqua Foundation and Trans Inclusive Network and Casa Ruby, our own Tatiana Williams will be um, uh, on the panel of distinguished individuals talking about the importance of uh, HIV testing within the transgender community and all that we can do to, to help our brothers and sisters that are in the experiencing trans community. So last week I talked about the census and about the results of what were each of the municipalities in our county were experiencing. So, Wilton Manors, you have gone up 1.1% to 46.9%. But Cooper City has taken over the lead of Weston, and they are at 63%. So, folks, my 93-year-old mother called the census and gave her information. If my 93-year-old mother can do it and take the time and can call and talk to someone, I think everyone in our county can do it because all of the head counting that is occurring helps determine the allocation of trillions of dollars of funds throughout the country. And Broward County needs to have every head counted now. 
So please do not think it was just a flyer. It was trash. You got something on your door. You got something in the mail. Um, they prolonged the dates of when people out in the field can go door to door and knock and, and, and help you or assist you to ensure that you complete the census. But it is absolutely instrumental because that data determines funding allocations for the next 10 years. So please, please, please. And then the City of Walton Manors in their e-blast that they sent out today had a link to Broward County services that are available throughout the uh, pandemic. So if you're not on the City of Walton Manors distribution list, please sign up to do so. There's a wonderful link, as I mentioned, regarding uh, the county and all of the resources. Uh, if you have any issues, questions, problems, um, call 211 Broward, and they have a 24 hour comprehensive help, help line providing people with all uh, crisis health and human service support and connecting you to the correct uh, service providers. So, Let's go on our tour. So again, we are on the third floor of the residences. There's going to be 21 studios, 21 one bedroom and six two bedroom apartments. So we are projecting to open up in um, around the 1st of September. So uh, provided that the uh, supply chain does not get interrupted, um, everything should, is going along uh, on the schedule and on budget. So last week, Roger made fun of my shorts, said he had never seen cargo shorts in, uh, since the 80s. And also Jason Hagopian, who is, uh, works for Sound Design, is on our board and did the renderings, made comments about my shoes. So these are my residence touring shoes because it's very dirty, dusty around here and I don't want to wear anything good and get them all messed up. So. Thank you, Jason, and thank you, Sound Design, for all of your work. So, uh, I am going to take us through that walking tour. And as you can see, the third floor is not as far along as the um, uh, fourth or second floor, but this is the elevator bank that will be going in. Uh, looking over the courtyard, this is where the two elevators will be. We've got some gallons of stuff here on the floor. I don't know what that's for. I'll be in there to help you in just a second. <laughs> so let's go down here. So um, these are the chandeliers that are actually going to be in the hallway. I think it's very retro, and uh, this will be very stunning uh, when we're uh, all up and running. Just kidding, these are not the actual light fixtures. So let's go on here. And let's go into, this is apartment 308, and this is a studio bedroom. Uh, last week we went into 207 to take a look there. But this is the studio apartments that have the balconies. Again, last week we uh, went over into the one next door downstairs. And then, hello, how y'all doing? Doing you selling the unit? Yeah, giving a tour as we speak. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, as you can see from over here, you can see the uh, Wilton Station. So we're just going to wave to everyone at Wilton Station. Great view of people exercising. Hello! So, even though it is a studio apartment, you know, it does have a separate bedroom. And a walk-in closet. That is so cool. How many studios do you know that have a, a bedroom and a walk-in closet? Very cool, very cool. As you can see, we're spackling, we're still putting up drywall in here and doing all sorts of activities. Let's go down here. 
I think this is a uh, lid for the toilet, but I'm not certain. But it's pretty, it's orange. So let's go on down to the uh, uh, two bedroom apartments, which are on the ends. Kitchen be. The kitchen would be right here. Kitchen counter. Everything's custom made. Italian marble. <laughs> well, okay, something's from Italy, but it ain't the marble. Hey, there's excuse me. This is the staircase. And then this is the one bedroom I want to show you. Again, walking into the kitchen. Walking into the bathroom. Shower. Walk through closet. One bedroom overlooking the uh, New entrance, the new courtyard. They've started painting the envelope of the building. You can see the white and the two colors of gray. There's, and if you look down, 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 you can see the red accent color that's actually going to be uh, the accent color along the eyebrows all around the building. Tools. I never want to wear those again. 
And now that uh, I have shorter hair, I don't need these curlers. Oh my God, they're just hateful. And this, well, I never did like this. I never did this. It still has the tag on it, but uh, oh, Roger, did you want that? And then, well, these fuzzy slippers, they are so comfortable that as you can see, they're stained. You know, I'm gonna just keep those. I think I'm gonna wear them. And then uh, I cut my hair. Oh, by the way, I cut my own hair. Look, look, look. And this is what came off. So I'm cleaning out. And then um, I think this was Tomas's. So uh, I'm no longer storing this, and I'm to tossing that out. And one last shoe. And so I am halfway through my spring cleaning. So please catch us next week as we go up to the fourth floor and see the progress that they're making here at the residences at Equality Park. Again, we are planning on opening up around uh, September. Application process, I wish I was in front of my coffee and conversation crowd, because the application process opens up how many days prior to opening? 45 days prior to opening. So um, please stay tuned, sign up for our e-blast, sign up for the Activagers e-blast if you're interested in knowing more information about our Activaging program. So again, here at the Pride Center, all of our staff are still busy working. Everyone's working remotely. We're still linking people to services and programs throughout the county. And although we are not physically doing HIV testing, we can link you to those healthcare service providers that are still providing that very, very important test. And so during this time of the pandemic, this is not a time to relax our practices, our safe sex practices. Please, please, please keep that in mind. Do not act without um, knowing the results of your actions. And so please be safe. So on behalf of the staff, the board of directors, and the 300 plus volunteers that help everything happen at the center, I thank you. Our mission statement is again, we provide a welcoming safe space, a welcoming home that celebrates, nurtures, and empowers the LGBT communities and our friends and neighbors here in South Florida. So I've got my gloves, I've got my Lysol wipes, and I've got my mask that I'm going to put on because I have got to get back to work. As you can tell, we are very busy and we are off of break, so I have to go back and start doing something with that tool that I don't even remember what it's called. But anyway, thank you for joining us today. Don't forget about tomorrow at 5 o'clock with the Legal Aid panel. And then um, Tatiana is on Friday morning at 11 a.m giving her update on Thursday, Thursday, Thursday a.m. And then um, uh, go to our website, our Facebook page, and keep abreast of everything that's going on. Stay safe. Thank you so much.